Hello everyone, my name is Andrea Corin. I'm the founder of Brightpreneur and I welcome you to this webinar. We're going to be looking at the new Pinterest features and we're going to navigate them and I'm going to give you some tips as I go along with it. Just as a backstory, I discovered Pinterest a few years back because I own a couple of websites and I was taking a look at analytics for those sites and I saw that this site Pinterest.com was referring people to me and bringing me traffic. So I went ahead and I visited Pinterest and I saw what it was about and I jumped on board. I created an account and um, I started creating my boards and pinning and that's how I discovered Pinterest. A lot of things have changed since then and um, Pinterest has added a bunch of cool new features. I hope that you have a pen and a notepad or that you are taking notes because I'm going to give you plenty of information on these new features. We're going to start with the search. The search bar right here. Um, now the search is called actually guided search. So let me do for example pie recipes. So what happens now when you are searching something on Pinterest is as you see I put a keyword pie recipes and it has actually divided the search into individual keywords. On top of that now Pinterest creates subcategories depending on what you're looking for to help you discover other areas. So for example now we have subcategories here of pumpkin, apple, peach, sweet and so on. These subcategories are actually created based on the keyword that you input in the new guided search. These are not categories that you are going to find on Pinterest um, category pages. Those can be found right here and uh, now you have feature boards and uh, home feed popular everything these are uh, seasonal they are not always there for example the thanksgiving tips if you come and visit this in february that's not gonna be here more than likely they will have a feature valentine uh, board or page and see where it starts with animals um from there in on goes in alphabetical order. Those are actually the categories that you can choose when creating your own boards. So these are subcategories based on your keyword search and the ones that you find down here in the drop down are the ones, the seasonal ones first and then the ones where you can put your boards at. You also see here you have more about the company you have the about, the blog, the business that, um, the business section that we're going to be talking about in a while, careers, developers, uh, removals, if you need to request a pin removal because you see that somebody has taken one of your images and didn't quote you or they did not attribute it to your site, they are attributing it to somebody else or some sort of thing like that, this is where you can request a removal. So let's go back here to the search for the pies. And as I was saying, now you have the keyword search you input, the subcategories that Pinterest has created for you. And here we have what used to be um, the old search. So now we're seeing all the pins. Now your pins, if you want to see that, if you have anything with pie recipes in your pins, uh, boards and pinners. So let's say that I want to see boards. As you can see, there are many, many um, boards that are named pie recipes. And one of the very important things that I need you to take away from this webinar is that keyword um, or search engine optimization now for your boards is very, very important. It's important for you to choose preferably a a title for your board or a headline for your board that includes a keyword in this case pie recipes it is very important that you actually choose 
a description that probably also has the keyword on it. And same thing goes for when you are creating not your boards but your pins. Now with this guided search it's very very important that you include the keyword on your descriptions and on your headlines, on your pins and boards. It is going to be very very easy for you to, or not very easy, but easier for you to rank for a pin board on outside search engines like Yahoo, Bing, Google, then it's going to be for you to rank for a keyword for your own site. So be very very careful when choosing your keywords because now with this new guided search you may call these boards instead of pie recipes um i don't know something like uh, uh mom ideas in the kitchen nobody's gonna find you and the reason why nobody's gonna find you is because now you're not gonna show up on the search because i seriously doubt there's a lot of people looking for mom ideas in the kitchen so think about how your potential clients are looking for you because that's very important. We can get very technical sometimes. We can try to be creative and we leave actual keywords that make sense to people searching out and then we don't get fined. So if you're going to take something away from this is choose your keywords carefully. Also include them in your title and your description and it will be easier for you to rank on the search engines. So we have talked about the profile and how to set it up. Also very important, you need to have an image um, that will represent your brand. This is not clearly a picture, it's just a cartoon drawing. Um, this is what I've been using from the beginning with the website, so it's still staying there. And now people kind of recognize the little bright cartoon along with my website. So it's part of my branding. I'm not planning on changing it anytime soon. I may or I may not, but try to put something uh, as your profile picture that people can truly recognize. Also, I'm going to press here edit because I'm going to change it, but just because I want to show you. Um, as you can see, that's the username, and you only have that's where. In the about you, that's the description that is going to show up. And as you can see here, this is where we are claiming that my site is verified. So as I'm saying, you know, if you are not verified yet, just go to business.pinterest.com and you can get the script there. You can install it or your web person install it for you. And that will actually brand you and help bring people to your site and place you as an authority. On the almost on the top, not the very top, but the lower um, top right corner of your screen, you have this small wheel here. And I have everybody has this, but you may not have all of these sections active. All of these sections become active once you have a business verified account. So once you do, you're going to have access to analytics, um, and that's one of the most important things right now going on we're going to come back to this in a minute i just want to show you that if you do have all of these but not all of them are active that's the reason why is because you need to have the business account here is my profile anytime that i want to go you know to the thing that you're seeing you can click over here and it's going to bring you to your boards, your pins, how many likes, how many followers, and how many people you are following. Right beside your uh, profile, if you press it, you're going to see that you have all your notifications. News. So this is what my uh, followers are up to, actually. I see that this person has been liking pins. Somebody has been following other boards. See, she's following desserts and cheesecakes because right now we have Thanksgiving coming up. So there's a lot of uh, people following for recipes and trying to enter. And that's uh, my followers. Now, me, I have an invitation to join a group board. And this is just related to the activity that is related to my profile. 
Um, I see that somebody liked a pin, that some people started following me, uh, some other people have been repeating my pins. So that's what you see here. One of the newer features as well is messages. Now you can message people on Pinterest. And as you can see, I was inviting people to this webinar, some other um, wedding professionals that may be interested in knowing about all of these new features. I was actually sending them messages. And you, what you do is you press new message. And you're going to press who you want to send it to. The person needs to be following you in order for you to send a message. You need to be connected. If the person is not following you, you cannot send them a message. So I could press here, I don't know, um, maybe uh, some sort of brand or I don't know, Nordstrom or somebody that has millions of followers and try to send them a private message and the system is not going to let me because these people is not following me. We're not connected. The system is not going to allow me to connect them directly. They consider it spam. Now, if there's a connection, they allow us um, to go into more uh, private things. So I can send them straight something straight to their inbox. And right here I have a notification. Let's see, and this is what happens. Sometimes you open it and you have, you know, 1, 10, 20, uh, whatever your activity for the day is. And as you can see, somebody just liked the pin again. So this pin, for whatever reason, is super popular. It's the pin of uh, Justin Timberlake's wedding. And uh, for whatever reason, people love that pin. I, I don't know. It's not clearly one of my images. It's something that I repeat, I think, from People's Magazine or something when the wedding happened. But for whatever reason, I think that Bright loved this image. I don't know if it's because of him or it is because his wife wore a pink dress, um, which, which was gorgeous. But, you know, I, I don't know uh, why people like that pin so much. I, you know, if it was only her in the dress, I will say that it's because of the dress. And I want to believe it's because of the dress. And my theme is theme wedding ideas, but as many people fancy him, maybe it is because it is him. I, I really don't know, and I'm not going to go into that right now. Anyways, that's the main screen. Now, something important for you to think about. Um, I have, as you can see, 56 boards, right? And um, when you just open up the screen, only my first four boards showed up. If you want to see more, you need to scroll down. So I see many, many people that actually um, places boards. I don't think that's a good idea. And the reason is because, like with any website pro most important is a and the fold uh, will be the bottom of, of the screen for those that want to know what the fold is or are not related to the term so anything that you actually gotta scroll down is kind of which has opened so which boards do you think that you should have right here you should have the boards, in my opinion, that people are looking for the most. So those are the, the four boards that I know that people look constantly from me. And I'm going to show you how I know this in a little minute. But if you keep on scrolling down, the first row is your land thing. So, if you have your boards alphabetically, one of the tips that I want to give you is just go back to your boards right now and rearrange them. Um, you should know what people is repinning from you. So just put on top what your audience finds more interesting or more appealing. And that may help you to engage other people that doesn't know about you yet. Second and third row are also important because these people are going to 
scroll down a little bit, this is probably as far as they are going to go. Now, people that engage with you, they are going to go all the way down if they have visited your profile. In other words, we know that there are different types of boards on Pinterest. If you just want to create one, you go right here. You can press and you're going to create a board. You're going to give a name. You are going to assign it a category. Hopefully, you know what's your niche very, very well. And you can find an appealing category uh, for your board. If you're not sure what the categories that are already set in Pinterest are, because you cannot create a category for your board to be placed at, if you come right here, you see these are all the categories that Pinterest has. Right now, they are featuring Thanksgiving tips because of the season. If you want to go to your feed, you can press right here. And your home feed is actually all the newer pins or popular pins from people that you follow. You can see what's popular. You can see everything. If you don't have any you know, particular interest that you just want to see what's up, you have GIF and videos. And then below videos is where the actual categories start. We have place boards and animals and architecture, art, cars, celebrities, blah, 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 blah. You, you see there's a, a bunch of boards. So, um, excuse me, not place boards, but from animal boards and down, see where they start being in alphabetical order. Those are the actual categories you're going to be able to choose from when you are setting up your board. So if you just want a quick look, you know, you come right here before you even start your board, and that's what you're going to do. So I was talking about boards and the different types of boards. When you're creating it, as we have discussed, you know, choose a smart title, choose a smart description for your board, choose the best category for Pinterest to include your board in. and when you're creating it, you actually have the choice to make your board public, like the ones you see here. Everyone can see this. And you also have the option um, a secret board. So Pinterest allows you to create three secret boards. I don't have anything here. These boards are just um, to be seen by yourself, and maybe to people that you want to invite exclusively to see these boards. I don't have any. I don't know if you want to include this in your marketing, marketing strategy or not. Um, I know of some people that actually create uh, secret boards and they do collaborations with other fellow pinners or professionals and they work on the secret board before make it live to everybody else. Or maybe you just want to share something with your sister, your mom, your cousins, and you know that's something that is private. You don't want to put it on your business account clearly, so you just invite them by mail with the secret um, board link direct, and that's the way that they are going to be able to see that board. They are not nobody else is going to see it. But you can only create three. If you want to know more about secret boards, um, you can you know, come to the bottom of your profile and just see, learn more. And you're going to have all the documentation there about secret boards and how they work. I don't have any. I don't find them beneficial for my business account either. I really don't want them. Now, you here. When I press my notifications, that I have an invitation to join a group board. And this is something that if you're not familiar with, please, please pay attention, because this can be very, very beneficial for you. This is one of the ways to keep your Pinterest um, account active, even when you're not there. So group boards like this one that I belong to. Actually, let's open this one because I like this one better. It's better word um, 
and describe there. Group boards are collaboration boards, which means that more than one pinner is allowed um, and pinned over here. As you can see, there's uh, 11 people or 11 pinners pinning into this board. The way that you know that this is a group board from my profile is actually because let's go back. Okay, um, this is a right. You see the headline, and that's it. This is a regular board. You see the headline on group boards. You see after the headline that there's a small icon that looks like three people. So when you see this in anybody's profile or in any board that you're able to see, that board is actually a group board. So let's open it up again. And you can see the group board. You can be invited to a group board. If you want to be participant in one of them, you may receive you know, the invitation like I just showed you that I received. I have not accepted, neither ignored that notification yet. What happens is that somebody creates a group board. And the person that owns the board, the person that originated the board, is usually the first pinner that you see right here. So this profile right here actually created this board. And then she started inviting pinners. Now, once that you are a pinner on the board, you can go ahead and start inviting people to pin with you. The interesting part about boards is like, for example, this board I believe has like 942 pins. My board my individual boards are not that extensive. As you can see, the person that owns the board has a lot. But see, there's other people pinning too. When somebody pins on a group board, that board shows in all of the pinners that are involved profiles. So it becomes part of your profile, but it also keeps your account active. This board particularly um, has almost 1,500 followers. There are other group boards that have, you know, 20, 30,000 followers. So you may have a profile that has only, I don't know, 50, 60 followers on Pinterest. Being invited to a group board or creating a group board is a great way to give you exposure as a brand and as a leader in your industry. You can go ahead and create these boards. And in order to invite somebody when creating a group board, uh, once again, these people um, needs, to be, you, needs to be connected with you or to you. However, there's people that you may not be connected to and you want to be part of the boards, right? Well, you're going to have to follow them. I am pretty sure that you guys may be asking, okay, Andrea, yes, you were in the wedding industry and, you know, maybe you have friends in that industry. I'm just starting. I have no idea who's going to invite me. I have no idea how to find this board. How am I going to request to be part of the board? You know, I, can I approach just somebody and say, let's make a group board? Um, probably you can, but there's actually people who love having group boards. So one of the great ways to find it is to do a little research. And we're going to put something like, whoops, look at the, the pie recipes. I guess I'm going to have to have pie or something because they keep on coming up. Ah, piercings, what? This is just like, this is something that I have never looked for and it's just coming up because I put pie. Okay, I don't want that. Let me go back. Okay, 
now that this is uh, clear, one of the ways to find boards is to put contributor or see. And now Pinterest is giving me uh, the option. It's saying contributor, contributor boards, page, contributor magazine. And these, as you can see, are actually um, accounts that have this name. So what I want is to see contributor boards or contributor boards. I'm sorry, uh, guys, I'm originally from Argentina. I speak Spanish, so I'm pretty present, but that's OK. That's not going to stop you from teaching you right here. And here is what happened now with the guy, like I told you before. Now it has a split up my keyword that I was looking for. So now anything that has contributor or anything that has boards is showing up down here. These are all the pins. I cannot see what are the actual boards. So I'm going to press on boards on the filter. And voila. See it right here? Board. And we know that it is for sure a contributor work because you see the icon. You see it over here. You see it over here. Um, this one has 280 pins, 320 pins, 520 pins. Um, the problem with this is that they are all scattered, right? You don't know. You may be a health coach, and your friends, and this one looks like a home board. Ideas for moms, probably, on this one. I don't even want to know what this is. You never know what's going to come up on your search. So we're going to come back up. And now we have contributor boards. And um, we want contributor boards for put your keyword, right? Or something that is near to your keyword. So I'm going to say contributor boards um, Christmas. I, if, if I will be working on Christmas and I have something to promote that is Christmas-like. Uh, that's what I would love to see. So let's see if anything comes up. So we have a, a bunch of things with Christmas. Um, we have um, Christmas. I'm not even going to open this. And Christmas cookie recipes. Um, and see if I just hover over, it's telling me more from Christmas board, and it's accepting contributors. So wow, if you have any sort of like um, Christmas cookie recipe or whatnot, this will be great for you because they are saying that they want people to actually contribute to the board. The rules are very simple: pin direct to a cookie recipe or info on cookie exchange parties. They don't allow more than ten pins per day. To receive an invite, please leave a message. Feel free to add your friends. Right? So as I was telling you, once that you are part of a board, you are allowed to invite people to come and pin to that board. And these people is embracing it. It's saying, you know, we want you here. And not only we want you here, but if we give you an invite to the board, go ahead and invite your friends too. Why would you want to go ahead and be pinning in somebody's board, right? And it's for a couple of different reasons. One of them is you are not the only one pinning over there, so it keeps your account and your board active, even if you are not pinning. I have not pinned to this creative thing within ideas. I cannot tell you in how long, and I receive constant traffic from it constantly. I I cannot tell you. Pinterest is probably my second um, traffic referrer after Google organic search. But I received tons of visits from Pinterest. And I, can, and I know this because I can see it on the website. See, um, this is, I open up the Christmas cookies um, board, and there's 22 people pinning. As you can see, once again, the first person to show up is actually the one that created the board. 
I can, as a fan, you know, follow the board. I can share the board with somebody now. Right? I can press right here. When you see this little icon, it's because you can share. And the way that is shared is by sending whoever a message. So once again, you can share with people that is connected with you. Now look at this board. Um, they have 315 pins and they have 9,000, more than 9,000 followers. What will that do to you if you are actually a recipe site or a food site, or a food blogger, or I don't know, maybe like a health coach that has a cool um, sweet recipe, sugarless for Christmas. You can actually come and be part of this board and just create that pin. You pin to that board and that pin is going to be exposed to more than 9,000 people. I don't know if you guys are getting the concept, but that is powerful because now, maybe, not only part of that 9,000 people would actually see your recipe and they may just go to your website to get it, they may follow you on Pinterest and they may end up following you on your site as well. You may be able to sell after you create a relationship with them. So that is the power of Pinterest bringing traffic to your site. So. That is it for boards right now. Um, I show you one of the ways to find contributor boards. So just do a search. There are other ways to, to find searches, um, boards and, and pins. And, uh, but this is one of the, you know, uh, if you are on a shoestring budget, if, if you are bootstrapping right now, I don't want you to go and spend money on extra software that does exist, but this is the quickest, easiest way for you to find boards to contribute to if you are just starting and you just want to give it a go and test it and see how it goes for you. This is one of the ways that you can do so. We're going to go back to our profile. All right, and uh, we are back home now. And that is it. Well, now um, I want to talk a little bit about what happens once you are on Pinterest, right? And um, you see these pins that are super popular, and you're wondering how on earth did this pin become? So popular. What 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 is it that makes a pin go viral? Headline, description of your pin. I am I'm gonna repeat this a lot today because I want you guys to get it. It's more important than any time before that you actually have keywords that are related to you, whatever you can on your pin, on your description, on your headline. It is very, very important because now that guided search is on and full force, as I showed you before, now Pinterest is filtering for the people that comes and searches here. So it's not only important for the Pinterest search, as I said before, but for all of the other um, search engines that are out there, there's a good, good chance that you can rank with one board on the search engines way quicker and easier than what you will rank your own site for in the search for in the search engines if you try to do it on your own. And one of the reasons is because there are millions of users on Pinterest, the site, the Pinterest site where your profile and boards belong to. Um, it's always active. There are millions of people having activity there, and that is something that search engines crave big time. Fresh content, curated content, great content, great visuals. Pinterest really has it all. So Pinterest boards rank high in search engine traffic. And if you have all of the elements in place, 
if one of your boards ranks on first page on a search engine site, there are great chances of humongous traffic coming your way to Pinterest and then going back to your site. So it's very, very important to choose keywords. So yes, search engine optimization can be done wonderfully through Pinterest. People can truly find you. And as I'm saying, you know, it's going to be way easier to rank for your boards or your pins that is going to be to rank actually from your site. So take that into account when you are writing Pinterest descriptions. Um, I was talking about the, the pins going viral, right? What, what is it that makes them viral? So let me show you over here. This site is called repint.net. You can see it right here, repint. Let me go back to the webinar screen to make sure that you guys are seeing it. Indeed, I don't think you are seeing it. So let's just the screen so you can see it. Bear with me, guys. I don't know why this is not showing. But at least I believe it's not showing. You can see it now. I believe you can see it now. So. I show you part of my uh, dashboard also on the, um, this webinar is being held on webinar jams in, in case that somebody is wondering if Google Hangouts uh, mixed with webinar jams. So if you saw my previous screen, that's what's going on over there. That was the webinar jam screen. So repin.net. Um, this is a website, a third party website. Um, they are not really associated with Pinterest, but they take all of the information from it and they feed from it. And what they do is show you the most repeat pins. You can see that they have, this is like all categories. So look at this one, 805,224 repins. Crazy amounts of traffic on this picture. How nice would it be to get a chunk of it to you, right? If you get this big and this popular. So these are all the categories. Then they, of course, have like subcategories over here. If you're into home decor, hair and beauty, weddings, humor, kids, here. See, you see all of the popular things that are going on right now. And uh, as you can see, these pins are super, super popular. This is crazy. 105,000 people repeating this. It's insane to me. 56,000, 46,000. As you can see, there's um, recipes with yourself. This is actually a centerpiece with uh, the little um, the marshmallow uh, bunnies and jelly beans and uh, the thing do it yourself. So I want, I would love for you guys to tell me if we could connect with each other and we could actually talk, right? Um, what do you see here? What, what do you think that it makes these uh, pins so popular? Against everybody's belief, all of them have great photography, that, that's for sure. But they are not watermarked. You don't see anybody's name over here or website, right? It's just a plain um, photograph, uh, photograph. There are uh, recipes and there are quotes. Um, this, this one is branded actually. See, it says ap apartment therapy and uh, how to make a clementine candle. This type of pin are actually popular. This is something that you can um, 
think for your brand. I'm going to click on it. You can pin actually, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to pin it. Um, I mean, open it. So it's a great um, quick visual tutorial. And she says, apparently, oranges burn like candles, no messy wax, and no wig required. Definitely trying this. So she saw this, and she decided it was a good thing. She branded it and just uploaded it. And now look at these 43,000 repins. That's crazy. So tutorials are one of the pins that engage your audience the most. If you have anything that you can make a tutorial of and turn it into something visual, just like this one, I mean, it's three pictures, line up, showing the step by step, and this got crazy repeating power. This went viral, definitely. Um, if you can do anything like this for your brand, that will bring you traffic for sure. Now, this is a comment, right? It, it, it's not the actual, um, it's not the actual pin description or whatnot. Here we can see it on Pinterest. So we're going to back to Pinterest. Let's see if you can see this. All right, so now we are on Pinterest. And uh, right here you see it's 43,000 repins. She uploaded it. And um, there's people commenting on it, right? It has like 40, 49. Uh, this was uploaded three years ago, by the way. So this has been popular for at least three years. This is crazy. And you can see the ton, ton, ton of comments that this pin has. One of the last comments was 10 days ago. There's another, oh. See all 226 comments on this uh, pin. So think about what you can turn into a tutorial, a how-to, um, a step-by-step -step demonstration. Um, those pins are highly, highly popular. I'm going to go back to the profile, my profile. And I want to show you a little something over here with um, this account has been verified, as I said before, and it has um, not only been verified, it's, it's a business account, right? So I have access to analytics. This is one of the newest features for Pinterest for business. If I come to analytics, that is loading right now. I have insight on what the activity of my account is from the back end and my audience and my profile. So what is going on? My average daily viewers are 2,172. The impressions are near 3,000. So this means that, you know, I'm losing about 1,000 people that, you know, sees a picture somewhere on the search but doesn't really come and see my profile. It's still a pretty good number. That's like a, a third part of, of the daily um, viewers. A, th a third part of the daily impressions um, are not actually making it all the way to my profile. I got some people that is engaged, you can see here. I got some people that may not be. And we have the activity. And the important part, or one of them anyways. These are the top pin impressions in the last 30 days from my account only. All right? This is actually a centerpiece. Uh, it's uh, some feathers and a candle, a bus, and it's it really, as I'm saying in the description, easy to create, simply placing the feather boa around the bus and the candle, blah, blah, blah. 
Okay, 88 people has repeated that within the last 30 days. Two people has actually clicked and came back to my site on this, or not even to my site to um, to the site that it actually I I found this originally at. So I am sending people traffic, right? Then we have um, like a paper flower tutorial over here also that is very popular. Here is Justin Timberlake's wedding. That, that's why I'm saying, I don't know what's going on with that pin, but you know, it seems to be popular. This is actually a pin that came from my site. And it's also getting repins and clicks. And um, you can also come up here. I'm gonna go back to the pin in a moment. So you can actually engage people to go But you can open up and get insights on my profile, on my audience, and the activities. I am really interested in knowing to see me and my products, and you should be too. So we press here on audience. You, you can filter this, right? Well, I'm not gonna do that. You guys have been here patiently with me for an hour already, and I have so much more to tell you. This I'm trying not to speed up, but I'm going to have to. So it shows me where my audience is coming from. I have the demographics, um, the language, the gender. That, you know, it is important, but not so much. What I want to show you is interest. So we are inside analytics, and we are inside your audience, and now we're going to be inside the very important thing over here is me. what is my audience? So think about how you can use this on your market because I have brides, right? And apparently, of course, they are getting married, you know, they want to look pretty and they're going to start their life as a new wife. So clearly they are into wedding ideas. They, they are probably planning their wedding. They want to know about hairstyles, they are going to know about do it yourself home decor, they want to know about makeup and fashion and recipes, nails, desserts, do it yourself crafts, maybe they are do it yourself right, you know, they want to do their own centerpiece, they want to do decorations, um, maybe they are just crafty, they know about eye makeup, braids and dresses. People come to Pinterest because they want to learn stuff, because they want to see something new, because they want to see something unique, because they are in discovery mode. So don't you think, I can show more actually, I have there, but don't you think that maybe it will be a great idea for me to start putting um, a nail, um, nail art tutorial board? on my profile. Don't you think that I will get more people to come to my site looking for that if I will do so, if I start pinning nail tutorials on my site? So that's something that you can do. You, you need to know what your audience is into. Pinterest is not only about promoting your site, or sharing the, the goods with everybody, and curating content, curating content, you know, finding, reviewing, and sharing the best content on the web with your audience. And sometimes it doesn't have to be yours. Now, look at this, this interesting thing. What happens is that um, these people that are coming to see me, the all audience is not mostly on Pinterest. They are also engaging with Etsy with WordPress, with eBay, with Squido, with Yahoo. So Etsy is also a marketplace, right? So maybe it is important for me to start going and pinning stuff from Etsy and just create, I don't know, best of Etsy board for my bride because they are engaging with this. So you, you need to, you know, once you have analytics and sometimes you don't know what to do with it, it, it's just data and you don't know how to actually put it to work for you. That's what you need to do. You just need to sit down, 
look at it and see what sort of ideas you can come up to include in your own marketing strategy to serve your audience better. So this is part of analytics. I think that this is really the, the one of the golden nuggets of analytics in Pinterest, your business account. This is super important. You can get so many ideas. You can get to get your audience better. So this is really, really um, a gold mine, I will say. We're going to come back. And this is my Pinterest profile. And it's telling me again the top pin impressions, how many clicks and repins. And um, here is this pin. These are cake stands. These are jewel cake stands. And they were found on my site. This is something that I pinned from my own site. Right? And um, this is um, one of the ways that I make money with Pinterest. So these cake stands, I made a product review on my site because I find them pretty. I think that they serve a lot of weddings and brides very well. I, I find them attractive. And I found them, and I did a, a product review on it. And this was been two years ago, right? And I have right here my website address in the description. We're going to click over here, and we're going to go to my site. When people is landing on your site, it is very important to try to capture their attention, to give them what they came looking for, and maybe not to sell them right there and then, but to capture their email and name, to funnel them to be clients. So when you visit my site, in most of the pages, this pop-up shows up. It blocks the screen. You have two options over here. Either you close the pop-up and you continue to see what you want to see, or you can enter your information and now you're part of my email list where you're going to receive emails. I'm giving you a free book there. Um, it's a 15 ideas to make your wedding unique. We can, um, you know, we can subscribe to the list. If you press submit, and this, if you submit, this is going to disappear. Or I can simply click it and close it, and now I have access to the page. What just happened there is called gating content. So anybody that comes to the site needs to cross that gate. Either you shut it, like I did by closing the pop-up, or you just subscribe to my email list and you're part of my list now. Not only you're part of the list and you're going to get a, a nice, you know, freebie, a nice book, but now you can actually see my, um, what you came looking for, which was actually the cake stands. So as I was telling you, I, I did a review on this product because I find it very appealing for brides and weddings. And as you can see, right there on the page. I have Pinterest right here. If people want to follow me on Pinterest, it's very important for you to notice on your site all of your social media channels so people know that you're active and that they can follow you. But right here, you know, um, I'm saying an amazing wedding cake needs to be displayed with pride. And I go ahead and I talk about the, the cake stand. And right here, I say click to order on Amazon. So if somebody's interested, I'm telling them where to buy it now. So people talk about Pinterest a lot, but sometimes forget that the strategies that you place on Pinterest are just as important as the ones that you place on your own site.
So most pins that come to my site and that are displaying on my Pinterest account, the purpose is to bring traffic back to me. And now that people is back to me, it's my job to keep them with me and to create a relationship with them. And maybe to suggest products or services or whatever it is that is actually bringing me money. And that's what you need to do. Think about what you can do to bring people back to your site to that visual outstanding content that you have on the Pinterest account. And once people get to your site, you need to capture that lead and you need to make it worth their while. I'm not saying selling them all the time, but create a relationship. What happens on your side is just as important. What happens when people land from Pinterest back to your site is just as important as what you're doing on Pinterest. So um, we've been here for more than an hour. I think that I have given you a ton, ton, ton of content. Right after this webinar, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you um, uh, a document with resources for you. I am closing windows now as, as I go. I know that many of you may not be very um, visually inclined or, um, or graphically inclined, not visually, and you don't know how to create the pin. So in the document I'm sending you, I'm going to tell you um, if you don't have your own photographs, you can actually buy photographs in some places that you can bring and either publish them on your site or you can actually upload them to Pinterest and link them back to your site. So because you have um, the option to put where in the description and you can modify a pin. So even if you are uploading a picture, you can go ahead and say, uh, this picture belongs in my website, uh, I don't know, andrea.com, even though the picture is not present on that site. Look at this one. See right here where it says source? This one actually came from my website, but I could erase it. And I could put my, I don't know, another page or another website or whatever. And now when we spin, that's what is going to show us the source of the site. So in this document, not only I'm going to show you where to get pictures if you don't have your own pictures, I'm also going to show you some interesting tools that you can use. And the last tool that I want to show you while we are still here. There, there's going to be another tool on the, on the document that I'm going to send you, but I want to show you a great tool. It's called Pinstamatic. I'm, I'm not an affiliate or anything with them. This is a free tool, so you can use it. It's Pinstamatic.com. And what this website does is actually uh, create pins for you. Here it is. It's pinstamatic.com. You guys should be able to see it now. All right. And see, this is the date. Here is a website. Let me show you what I was talking about creating the website uh, a screenshot. It's going to generate, well, it's not generating, what's going on? There it is. All right, so now you have um, a website screenshot over here. And you can do this with any website. Here you create quotes. I was showing you that. You can choose different styles. Um, I'm going to say, I love you. Who says it? Andrea, right? And that's how you can create quotes on the fly. Um, 
you can create sticky notes. This is the shape. Um, you can see the Twitter profile of somebody, just add the profile here, and it will give you a screenshot. So you, you can create different sort of pins and, and pin them straight from here. And when you're pinning, just create a wonderful description for your pin and go ahead and, and send it to your boards. And that, that's a great way to create visually appealing pins on the fly, really, in, in no time. So we are back to my board now. I hope um, that you guys have enjoyed this webinar. If there's something that I can help you with, do not hesitate to contact me at Andrea at brightpreneur.com and I will be sending you that document very soon. Hopefully it will be by your inbox tomorrow and I'm so glad that you attended. I'm not so glad that I cannot chat with you right now. I'm really not glad about that but I am hoping that you got a lot of things out of this webinar. If you have any questions please email them to me and I'm gonna go ahead and do um, like a Q and A or um, a, a most um, questions and answers uh, section that I will be emailing to you as well. As long as you email me and you have questions, I will be more than happy to help you. So you will be hearing from me soon. This is not the end. This is just the beginning. Once again, this is Andrea with Brightpreneur com and this webinar. I will see you guys soon.